All right, so the first step we're going to do in making this book cover is just set up our blank template here. I just want to explain, you can download this template here in the description to get started from this point. But I wanted to give a quick update on why I made the decisions as far as the size. So in a typical book, uh, like say like a paperback novel, it's five and a half inches wide by eight and a half inches tall. And that's just for the actual pages. Now the book cover, of course, extends a lot of times a little bit past that, especially on like hardback. Uh, so the actual cover will be six inches wide and nine inches tall. Now, again, that's just kind of a common size. Your book could be a million different sizes depending on what sort of cover you're designing. But I wanted to give you a sort of a standard. Now that ratio, if you look at that ratio, uh, so the width here is the six and then the height here is nine. What that means is it's a one to a one and a half ratio. So for every unit of width, it's one and a half times taller is the basic ratio of the actual uh, book. So right, so basically that. Uh, so what I've done here in my book or in this little design here, if we go to our image and down to image size, you'll see that the width of my document is 5,500 pixels and the height is 3,750. And that's because I have a front cover, I have a spine, and then I have a, a back cover. So that's uh, sort of the numbers I came up with. Now the resolution, you're gonna wanna make sure you have set to 300 pixels per inch, because of course this book will be printed so we want to make sure that we have sufficient resolution. We don't want to leave that default 72 for screen resolution in this case. Like in most of my videos, we work with 72 resolution, uh, but this one will be a printed output, so make sure you have that set to 300. Okay, so uh, you can kind of see here, I'm just going to do a quick little measurement so you can see. Uh, let's see if I'm going to zoom in here so you can see this. So if we just grab the little marquee tool and drag across just one book, you can see it's gonna be 8.3 inches wide. It, and then if we go here to the bottom and just drag up to the top, you'll see that it's going to be all the way to right there, 12.4 uh, inches. So in other words, my design is slightly larger than the standard novel. Now I did that on purpose because I wanted to have a lot of resolution so I could print this in an oversized book if I wanted to but it's easy to downsample. You never wanna create a document that has too few pixels because upsampling in Photoshop is not a great idea. So that's kind of the dimensions we're working with. You can go ahead and just start right from this template. Now you can see that I've got all these guides set up here. Uh, command semicolon, we'll turn those off and on. Uh, I wanted to show you how I set those up in case you're starting from scratch. So you need to have a little bit of, this is basically my, uh, my margins if you will the outer margins where I don't want text and things like that to bleed past so I can kind of have that set up. And to do those, you just say view and then new guide. So when you set up a new guide, you can either choose if you want it to be a vertical or a horizontal guide. So let's say I have vertical, I'm gonna position this one at 0.75 inches just to show you and you just hit okay. And that drops out a guide just like that. So what I did is I just inserted a guide there I made my measurement, I did the math, of course, and made sure it all equals out and then inserted my last guide here. And then I did the same thing. I said view insert guide or view new guide and I switched to horizontal and then I added my two horizontal guides. So now we have our back cover, our spine and our front cover and we're ready to design. So this is what the starting point looks like. I'm gonna go ahead and jump you over to what our finished product is gonna look like. Of course, everyone is going to have a different finished product after they follow this tutorial but the one that I kind of just designed up here for this example looks like this. So we have just our front cover over here. Uh, we have our spine, and then we have our back cover, and then just a little fake barcode. I just grabbed this off of the internet. I'm even not sure what that is, and then just made up a little fake price tag there as well. So this is what it'll look like. Uh, there's kind of several layers that go into this. There's my, you can see I've grouped all of my front, my back, and my spine into folders, so I can easily toggle those on and off. And this is what it's gonna look like. So we're gonna look at lots of text effects. We're gonna look at images, some layer styles. We're gonna be looking at blend modes and a few things like that. But of course, feel free to just uh, experiment and design your own and have fun with this project. Now, the first thing you're gonna, of course, do is probably get some images that you're gonna use on your book. Now, whether you illustrate those or you go use some free photography, that's up to you. Uh, but I pulled in this image right here. 
and I pulled in this image right here. Now I found these images just on some commercial free, copyright free Creative Commons websites. I'll show you the a resource for that here. Uh, my favorite resource is called unsplash.com. Uh, you just come to this website and you can just search for any random photo here. I'll just search for, uh, I don't know, a uh, landscape. And you can see that you've got tons and tons of images to choose from. And the reason why this site's nice is that all of the images here are very high resolution. So you can just download them for free. They are commercial free. You can use them in commercial uh, projects like a book cover. Uh, without requiring credit. It's always nice to give the uh, photographer themselves credit, but you're not required to on this website. And they have commercial use. Uh, that's an option. So whether you uh, design or illustrate, you'll probably want to start off with some photographs. So the theme here was kind of some, uh, for me anyway, for this uh, example was sort of like a horror mystery type of book cover. So I kind of just found two images that looked slightly, I don't know, eerie or, or strange. So I've got this one here and I've got this one here. Now, what we're going to do is I'm just going to design up here on the front cover first. Now, when you import your image into Photoshop, make sure you import it as a smart object. That's denoted by this little teeny icon right there. Smart objects will allow you to resize your photograph. So I can do a command T, a transformation on this image right here. And I can transform up and down and hit OK. And it's not going to degrade those pixels ever. So I can especially when you're designing, you want to have that on because you're not quite sure the position and size of all these. So make sure they're smart objects. Okay, so uh, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this layer on top here and I kind of want the effect. I'm going to turn both of these layers on. So I wanted this little guy's eye to kind of be on the top of this person. So what we're going to do to accomplish that is be uh, use a blend mode. So I'm going to select this layer here and I'm going to, it's the top layer and I'll switch its blend mode to multiply. And you can see what that does is basically it sort of makes this layer blend with the layer below it. And it's kind of like a bit see-through at this point, you can see. So um, I'm just going to kind of place this in a position that makes it look like sort of his face is going to going from top to bottom and you can resize this and whatnot. Uh, so blending is a kind of a good option whenever you have two photographs and you're trying to merge those two together. So that works there. I'm just going to take down the opacity a little bit here. And I'm going to go kind of go quickly here because this is just my sample. And then I will take this, uh, these two images here and merge them a little bit with a mask. So I'm going to turn on a mask. And I, I basically just want this area. I don't want any of these black pixels over here. So I'm just going to get a brush. And I'm going to make it a very, very large sized brush. So I'm using my right bracket and left bracket key to increase the size here. Maybe something sort of like that. Okay, and I want this brush to have a very soft edge. So I'm going to set hardness to zero there. So if I was to just brush this on a new layer, it's going to sort of look like that. So basically, this will become a mask. So I'm going to undo that and probably going to go a little bit bigger so I can kind of see something around maybe that size is what I want. So now I'll switch back over here to this layer and make sure I'm on my mask layer. So I click on my mask. I just hover right over the center there and just single click. Okay, now you can see that that basically did the opposite of what I want. But now I can click on this mask layer. I can come into my properties and I can just invert the mask. So I click on inverse and now you can see that that's sort of the effect there. So that the, you know, the, the eye is just kind of creeping out there a little bit. And then I can get this layer and just kind of move it down or position this where I want. Yeah, something like that. And if you're unhappy, you can always just fill your mask back with solid black and then just try again. So I think that was a little bit big. So I'm going to come down a couple clicks and re whoops, fill it with white this time, re click in there and something like that. OK, so that's the basic effect for blending those two layers together. Um, and now that I have that in place, I'm going to take these two layers and kind of position that maybe down where I want the front cover to be or this is going to cover the entire uh, front cover here. So I want to make sure that, you know, this uh, object here is basically centered from the left and the right, because this is my front cover. So I'll just maybe nudge those over here a bit. Select both of those layers. I'm just using my arrow keys to nudge a little bit. So something around there looks fine enough uh, for me. Whoops. Okay. 
Uh, next, we're going to add in some type here. So let's go ahead and grab our uh, type tool. Now, the type I used in this example is not a not a type that's built into my computer. You can see it's called uh, Oreode Bold. And the place I went to get this type is a website called... I'm just blinking on the name. It's going to come to me. Defont. Man, I could not think of that. Defont.com. D-A-F-O-N-T. Now, not all fonts on here have commercial usage. So you'll want to definitely see, you can see over here, this one's free for personal use. Um, some of them are free for commercial use. This one right here, you can see is 100% free. So you want to check if it's free for personal, you may need to contact the font author to see if you're allowed to use it in a commercial setting or may have to pay for the font. Um, so I'm just going to search for that font. I think I spelled it wrong. Maybe I'll just search for horror. So I just searched for the word horror and there's all sorts of, you know, fonts over here that you can download and use uh, on your project. So let me come back and get the exact name of this one. It's H-O-R-R-O. -R -R -O. Let's try this again. H-O-R-O. -R -O. Horroroid. Oh, it was the font. I didn't even pay attention there. So this is the font I downloaded. So all you have to do is just click on the download button and install this font on your computer, and then it will run inside of Photoshop. So I'm gonna come into the folder here, and you can see that there, this font has all sorts of variants. So I kinda of wanna pick up one that's fairly bold, so this is, I think, the one I used earlier. So I'm gonna double click on the bold one, and we'll just click on Install. And once you install the font, uh, you come back to Photoshop, and you click on your Type tool, and it should now be uh, installed. So if you come down here and have so many fonts installed here, it's taken a little while. And this is new in Photoshop 2019. If you just hover over this, it automatically will give you the preview here. That's what's happening there. So H-O-R, you can see there it is. So I click on that and hit OK. It's going to substitute, of course, um, but that's that's kind of how you can install a font. So now I'm going to jump back to this. I'll grab my type tool and just click here. And we'll jump down here and choose our new font. Of course, I did not even pay attention if this was uh, had commercial use. Uh, it's donationware, so I'd have to donate uh, in order to use this in a commercial setting. So, and I'll just uh, give this guy some text here. We're gonna call this. Whoops. Not sure what just happened. Oh, I have a transformation happen. Okay, so let's call this Shards of Shadow. And uh, let's, whoops, let's close down. You can see here that I've got, I've got this split out into three different uh, words here. So rather than have, you could do this all with a single text object. But for me, I think it makes more sense to split them off into three. So I'm going to create three different layers. So I'm just gonna duplicate this. One, two, three. Looks like I have an extra one there. And then go ahead and uh, make them all separate. So this one's gonna be shards. This one here is going to be the word of. And then our third one is going to be the word shadow. Okay, and now we're just gonna kind of position these around and sort of rescale them up. So I'm just going to grab all three layers here and do just a quick uh, free transform command T. And I'm not sure what's going on with my Photoshop, but I'm missing my, uh, I noticed this earlier, I'm missing my bounding box. So let me hurry and I'm going to save and then uh, relaunch Photoshop. We're back here. Uh, let's go ahead and retransform. Now you can see I actually have my transform bounding box showing back up. I actually had to completely reset Photoshop's preferences in order to get this to work. So kind of goofy, but it's working now. So I'm just going to kind of scale this up a little bit to scale all these letters. And now I'll start to kind of move them around. So let's grab the of, we'll stick it over here. We'll grab the shadow and we'll stick it up here. And you can kind of see the, the design I'm going for. I just want some big words here on the front cover so that it's kind of really easy to see that this is going to be a, a bit of a, or 
from the get-go. So we'll scale those up maybe like so, and then just kind of move these guys around again. So we'll stick this guy here. We'll stick this guy here. And that's pretty close. Uh, we'll, we won't try to match this exactly, but something like that. Now I do want the italics. So we're gonna grab all three of these letter, uh, we're gonna grab, I guess we can't do that to all three, but we're gonna grab the first one here, grab our type tool, maybe we can do this to all three. So if we select all three layers and we click on the little teeny tiny uh, folder, I guess, extra options there when you have your type tool selected, we're gonna turn on the full bold, so the italics, just so we get that font and italicized. Now, I think in the download there actually is a italics version of the font you could install as well, which would probably be better. But I'll just go ahead and just full bold it, or sorry, full italics for now. Okay, so now we have those. Let's go ahead and just position maybe this over a little bit, and we'll call that good for now. So we're just kind of watching the left edge. We want this space over here to kind of be the same as this space over here. And so it's a hair bit off, so I'm just going to maybe kind of shift these guys over to the left just a little bit. I'm just using my arrow key to nudge. Just eyeballing that really is all I'm doing. And now let's colorize the font. So you can see from this document here, I kind of went with this deep red. So I'm gonna grab my eyedropper tool, just sample that so I can come back to this document. Select my of word, and I'm just gonna do a uh, option delete to fill that text. You could of course easily just click on the color picker and paste in the color or whatnot as well. So now we have that, let's go ahead and add our shadow. So you can see over here, there's a bit of a shadow behind here on all of these guys. And what that is, I'm gonna zoom out a click or two so you can see that there's my uh, text there at the top. Whoops, I'm on the spine. Let me close the spine down. And come back into the front cover. There we go. And we'll come in here to our actual Effect. So this is just a drop shadow effect with basically no blur. So we can do that on an entire group. So rather than have to add that layer style to each one of these words, I can just highlight the entire lot there, Command G to group them all, and I'll just call this cover title. And now I can apply a layer style to the group. So I'm gonna go to my FX menu, come down here to a drop shadow, which is down here at the bottom. And then I'll move this out of the way so we can kind of watch what we're doing here. And we'll just crank up here. You can see the, the distance there and the spread and the size. So basically I want opacity set to 100% because I want this to be a really, really dark shadow. And I'm gonna offset it a little bit so I'll change my angle. I wanna turn global light off. I hate, hate this default. So let's turn that off and just switch this over to the angle. And then you just play around, right? So basically I want my, uh, Distance come in a little bit, so it's a little bit tighter of a shadow. Size, I want zero. That's basically the amount of blurriness. I don't want it to be blurry at all, so I'm gonna set that to zero. Spread, we can set to zero, and then just play with your uh, distance here. So I'll push that out a little bit, and we'll call that good. Okay, so that's kind of how we get a little bit of the shadow uh, effect on our words. Now there's just a few other little things here that we'll do on this front cover. You can see that there's a bit of a vignette is the effect where the corners are a little bit darker than the uh, middle. And the reason why I did that is so that the whole entire thing kind of blends together. So these edges kind of go dark and this edges start to blend to dark because the spine is black. I don't want to have like this really hard line. You can kind of see the line a little bit right here. But I sort of start to blend to black so there's a bit more of a smooth transition between the spines and the covers. Uh, so we're going to do that on this front cover uh, as well. So uh, we're going to do that with uh, more layer masks. So we'll come over here and, whoops, let me just double check one thing here in my layers. So the background of our document, I know I'm going quick and switching back and forth, but I don't want this to be a two hour video. Uh, so the background right now is white and I'm gonna set that to black. So I'm just gonna hit D to reset my default colors to black and white, and then option delete to fill that with black. Now when I add this sort of uh, mask on this entire front cover, it's gonna bleed into black. So this is the, uh, this is the effect. So I'll turn this off for now so you can kind of see what I'm talking about here. So we're gonna group all of these layers together and just call this front cover. 
and then we're going to add a mask on this entire group. So with the mask, you can see whenever I get a brush tool um, and you paint with black or white in a mask, right, you delete or hide pixels. And this is all non-destructive because I can just paint back with white, switch to black. I'm hitting X on my keyboard there and it's all non-destructive. So what we're going to do is, whoops, one, one tap step too far. Is we're going to add on this mask layer, basically a gradient. So if I create uh, a, if I grab my gradient tool and I'm working with a gradient that's black to white, that's my first preset, foreground to background, make sure that your foreground and background colors are in fact black and white, then I can create a mask here. So for the gradient type, I want this option right here. This is the reflected gradient. So in other words, it's just going to reflect my gradient from left to right. So as, as I draw right here, you can see that if I look at the actual gradient, it just reflects whatever you did on one side over here on the other side. And that's basically the way a reflected gradient works. So let me turn that back off. So if I turn on the black, you can see my gradient is basically the exact opposite of what I want. So we can always invert that. I'm just going to undo really quick like because I want my a little bit bigger. So I'm going to switch my black and white colors so I can still draw. So I'm going to start in the middle, click and drag towards the edges. So eventually, like somewhere over here, I want it to be pure black. So I'll kind of let go right before I get to the edge. Okay, And then as I turn on the black, that's the effect I'm going for. You can see that it gradually fades out uh, into black. So you can kind of play around with that and redo that several times if you want more or less. You just drag out farther or you drag out smaller, right? The, the littler you drag, the tighter the gradient, the farther you go, the softer it goes. So it's really kind of up to you, but that's uh, what I'm going to do here. So I'll redo it again really quick here. I'll drag maybe all the way out just about to the edge and then let go. Now, I think that's probably a little too little because it's starting to black out the words there. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go a little bit past. I'm holding down shift so I can get a perfectly straight line. You don't want to accidentally angle it and do something like that unless that's what you're going for. But shift, I'll go a little bit past and something like that. Yeah, it's probably close enough. Okay. So let's go ahead and then uh, add in just a few other details in here because we have some text. Uh, you can see I've got this down here and I'm not going to do all this by hand. I'm just going to steal this from my design I comped up before and drop it in here. And I'll put that above this layer. Oh, whoops, I don't have that in the group. I'm still in the group. Let's try to see if we can drag it outside. There we go. Because I don't want that to be affected by the gradient. I want that to kind of be strong. In fact, I may, maybe I don't even want the title to be affected by the gradient. So I could probably grab the title and drop it out there. I don't know, kind of up to you. I guess I'll maybe leave mine like that. So you would add some text and whatnot for your uh, author. And next we're going to do, so we're going to call that good enough for the front cover. Next we're going to do the back cover. Now for me, what I did is I just used the same image here that I used on my front cover and just kind of placed it over here in the back cover. So I'm going to copy this layer. I'm going to duplicate it down. Now I'm getting a lot of layers in here. I'm not naming my layers because of course I'm going very quickly. Uh, so I'll group all of these layers together and I'll call this front cover. And then I'll drag this one up here above this layer. And this layer right here is going, whoops, make sure you don't have that auto select turned on. I'll grab this layer and let me just hide the front cover so you can see what I'm talking about here. And this is going to be my back cover. So really, I'm only worried about this half over here. So I'll just kind of place it so that it's, I don't know, something interesting like this. This is going to be the back cover. And because this is a smart object, I'll end up masking all this out. So it doesn't really matter. I'll just leave it as is. Okay. Now for the back cover, it's very similar to what we did for the front cover. We just need to create that little effect over there. So let's just go ahead and do this on this layer directly. So we'll click on the mask tool. We'll get our gradient just like we did before. So we'll go grab our gradient tool, make sure we have white to black, start in the middle, hold down shift, and just kind of drag towards the edge. So again, I want this to fade out to black right about there somewhere. So that creates the gradient on there and fades everything else out to black. And from this point, I can just go ahead and design in my text. So you can see on this one, I did a slightly different version of the, the uh, font, the book cover, I suppose, on the back. Really, I just rearranged the, the layers and kind of resized them a little bit. 
So play around with that. Again, just to save time here, I'm just gonna grab this one from this document and copy it over. Actually, I won't because the font doesn't exist because I think I used an italic font. So we'll just borrow the one from the front cover. So let's grab the cover title element and I'm gonna hold down Option and click and drag this guy. This is just copying this all the way down to here. And then, whoops, I didn't quite get it out. And then I'll click and drag this. Get it outside of that group. Minimize that group again. Okay, so we'll just pull this guy over uh, into this side of things. And I'm just eyeballing this pretty quickly, but we'll make the of word a little bit bigger to kind of match the same size here. Close enough. Okay. And then we'll grab all three of these layers and just resize them as sort of a lot to get those down into a size that'll work inside of here. That looks pretty good. Okay, now I'm gonna grab all three of these layers and I'm gonna use my distribution command. So I'm gonna align them all to top so they all have the same top and then I'm gonna space them all, distribute them all evenly. So click this one here and that is, you can see the distribute spacing right there. And then I'll of course have to tweak that a little bit. Maybe it's a little bit, I need to go down a hair bit more. So let's just resize down a teeny bit more. And let's re-pull these guys out individually now. So we'll deselect the groups, pull this guy out, pull this guy over, this guy in the middle. Okay, close enough. You can tweak that and play around with the text. So now we've got the title in there. Uh, we'll copy same thing. So we're gonna copy the layer over here that we had. Let's go ahead and just hold down option and duplicate that one down here somewhere and then just move it over. So maybe I want this one, I guess, on top. It's the way I had it before, so we'll kind of stay consistent here. So this layer, I'll just put on top of that guy. And it needs to be a little bit smaller, I think. Whoops. Cancel this. Apparently I drug the wrong one out. So I left the original back in there and drug out my other one which is what I didn't want to do. You can see that there. So I'm gonna undo just a couple of steps. Command Z uh, to take this back before I did that. Made that mistake. So go back into the front cover, find that text, duplicate it, drag it down into here. Let's see if it's gonna work this time. Drop it over here. Now I'm not sure why this guy Oh, I did the same thing. Command Z. How am I dragging my own one? Oh, I have my auto select on. That's why. I need to turn off auto select. I always do that. Now we can drag the correct one over and hopefully that's the right one. There we go. Okay. So we'll drop that up on the top there and minimize these a little bit. So now we can kind of maybe shift these down a little bit. And I'll, you can see over here, this one's just a little bit smaller. So I'm going to take that layer and resize it down a little bit. And then maybe stick it over here on the right side to get those right uh, edges to line up. And then we're going to drop in a little bit of lorem ipsum text here. So we'll just grab our type tool and we'll just come in here and just drag a big box. Now this could be about the author. This could be about the book. It's kind of really up to you, right? So I'm just gonna drag one big paragraph, kind of maybe down into here somewhere, and then get this lorem ipsum text and make it a smaller size. Let's maybe go to 16. That's probably a little bit too small. Maybe, I don't know, 18. I can see some other weird issue in my Photoshop. It's not highlighting my font like it's supposed to. I have no idea why. Seems to be another weird bug that's happening to me. So anyway, uh, we can then go to our type and then add the lorem ipsum, paste lorem ipsum to get some more in there. And maybe we'll hit return in here a few times. Basically just, you know, you're gonna of course fill this out with your own type. Now, as far as the type goes, I like to have this justified type on the left and right. So I don't like it left aligned when we're dealing with this box. So I'm gonna select my type layer, make sure I have my type tool selected come up here to the uh, options again and 
make our type justified. So we're going to go to paragraph and we're going to do this. I like this one right here. It's justified with the leftover text centered like that. So that's how I'm going to do my type. You can do yours however you want. But just make sure we're kind of, I kind of just as I'm watching, right? I want this right edge to kind of maintain a consistent line. So if I was to draw, draw a line, you can see the shards and those paragraphs are roughly the same and the Andrew Wilson and the shadow and this paragraphs are roughly all in the same. They're not exactly perfect. That's kind of what I'm going for, right? So you want to line those up on your own to make that just perfect. Okay. Uh, last thing we need to do is add in a little bit of uh, some tags. So we're going to create this little tag down here. Then we'll throw in a barcode. And it looks like one other thing I had in here was this little title, Suspense and Horror. So maybe I'll just grab this layer and copy it down as well. Whoops. Don't do that. Cancel that. Uh, same thing. We're going to option drag this down to create a duplicate. And then we'll call this Horror Novel. So maybe we'll take this little guy and make it a little bit bigger. Sure, it looks good. And then we will put this up above our lorem ipsum. Bring both of these guys down a hair bit. Take this, make sure it's centered up there. And again, I'm not measuring these left and right. I'm just eyeballing them, but you probably want to get them perfect. Okay. Close enough. Now we'll do a little barcode down here at the bottom. So let's go ahead and I'm getting my layers a little bit messy here. So I'm going to turn off my front cover. I'm going to group all of these things right here into a group and call this back cover. Again, I'm not really naming the layers inside of here just because I'm going so quickly, but you'll want to name your layers. Uh, back cover and let's add in a little price tag. So uh, we'll just design this down here on a new blank layer. So we're going to get our shape tool. We're going to get the rounded rectangle tool. And we'll play around here with our, our radius value here in a second. But we'll just drop in a little shape. That's a white circle. And then in our properties over here in the right, we can just click and drag these guys to the left and right. And you'll watch the radius change right over here. So I don't know, something maybe 20 pixels looks okay for the roundiness. Maybe a little bit more actually. Um, let's try that again. Maybe clear up to 40. Yeah, that's a bit better. Okay, then we'll zoom in here and we're just going to add a text layer. So we'll add one more layer right on top. Grab our type tool, click inside of here. And I don't know, 35, 95. This is a really expensive book because we are really expensive authors, I guess. Bestseller, New York Times. And we'll come in here and add a dollar sign at the beginning. Again, I don't know why my cursor is not appearing in my text. It's kind of driving me crazy. Um, if somebody knows, maybe there's some weird setting I have, post it in the comments if you can figure that out. Make it black and um, you know position that around and change your size and whatnot to get it just where you want. Okay, now that I have those two things together, I'll group them as a unit just so it's a little bit easier to move the group and if I want to you know, position that. So I'm going to stick it same thing so that right edge is right along that right edge. Then we'll drop in a barcode. I don't have a barcode creator, so we can just come over here and do a little search. Uh, we'll say sample barcode. Of course, this will be provided. Whoops, sample barcode. This will be provided by your publisher. They're going to generate a barcode for you. But let's just copy this image here. Copy image. We'll come over here and just do a quick little paste. You know, drop in this little sample so you can kind of see what this is going to look like. Um, so there we go. We'll set that down in here. And now that we kind of have our barcodes and whatnot down there, uh, we want to just double check our margins. So the idea here is the bottom margin elements, you know, we want to have kind of the same spacing on the top. So just kind of watch those. This will drop down. This will drop down. Pull that down. Whoops. Changes to group. Okay, so we'll come ahead and just move this guy down again. I'm going to go grab this little group here that we did earlier. 
and just reposition a few things because I don't don't think I have enough warm ups in here. Just so kind of want to move this down a little bit, and we'll move the suspense and horror down a little bit. Whoops, wrong way. Anyway, you'll of course play with your spacing. Now, one of the things to note now that we have this kind of designed up how we want, let's turn back on the front cover. So the last thing we have, let's turn off the grid, is our spine. Now, the tricky thing here is that you don't know the width of your spine until you've actually written the book, right? So this width right here depends on how many pages are in your book. So you can design your front and uh, back cover, but you know this exact width is the variable width. So I've just kind of made mine arbitrary here at this width, but that's kind of the variable that's unknown. So let's uh, go ahead and create another group up here and we'll call this guy the spine and you can see here from my sample copy I basically just took what I have here on the back and just kind of dropped it down there so we're gonna do the same thing so we'll just take uh, let's open up our back cover and we'll take our title which is this guy right here and hold down our option and click and drag that entire group over like that and then I'm gonna move this entire group up up outside of there into the spine okay and then I'm gonna free transform so command T to free transform and just grab this guy hold down shift so I can rotate in a solid and just rotate it there 90 degrees and we'll drop it in somewhere here so I'm just gonna hit OK for now because I need to grab my you can see here I've got this and then I've got the title down there. So I'll grab this layer again from the back cover here, which is my, if I can find it, novel, there it is. And I'll hold down option, click and drag it down here. And then I'm gonna move that layer up, up, up into my spine. And then same thing, free transform, command T, hold down shift to do a 45 degree rotation and hit okay. And then drop that somewhere like so and of course you'll need to resize things you know if i want this to be a little bit smaller on the spine then i can just resize and move that however i want make sure it's centered in the spine you know nudge it over up and down grab this layer move it up in here and of course make any adjustments you need so that is basically now the full book cover uh, completely designed out so we can print that uh, and it will wrap lovely on our New York Times bestseller. All right, and lastly here, you can see that we just have a little bit of a mock-up here. This is in Adobe Dimension. I just threw the little book cover in here. So you can kind of see what it would look like on a little sample book. There's our front cover, the spine, and the back cover. And those kind of all rotate around and look like this. So that's a bit of a finished product, what it may look like uh, on an actual book. So I know that was very, very quickly, but I hope you just learned a trick or two on how to kind of get started and design up a book cover. I'd love to see anyone that follows this tutorial post a little link maybe to a cover that you've designed and uh, we'd love to see them. Ask any questions away in the comments section if you're stuck on something or have a little question and I'll do my best to respond to those if you're stuck. All right, we will see you in the next video.